it's Mike with UCastic. I'm here at RailsConf 2014, and I'm standing here with Yehuda Katz and Tom Dale, who are uh, the leaders of the or the creators of the Ember project and also contributor to uh, Rails. And they gave uh, Yehuda gave a keynote yesterday morning, and uh, they also gave a talk about how to build a smart profiler for Rails. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, to speak with me. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Yehuda, I, I know it's the, at the end of the day, and, and we're all pretty tired. <laughs> Uh, but could you, <laughs> could you sum it up a little uh, memory of, of the of the keynote talk you gave yesterday and, and what the, the, the topic was? Sure. So I based, sort of talked about two uh, two areas. Um, the first area was just sort of talking about the idea of cognitive or ego depletion, which is this idea that we have a limited store of cognitive capacity. It's sort of like you have a like battery. A, like like a, the end of the day of a, yeah, at a conference. Yeah, like the end of the day. We made so many decisions today. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and it's not, and so a lot of people think of cognitive capacity as something that you drains uniformly through the day or it drains when you work on hard problems, but actually it turns out that a lot of the things that drain your cognitive capacity are really mundane things like um, making making choices or getting into a little bit of an argument can have be like really depleting. You could spend like five minutes getting into an argument, and you've probably felt this after five minutes, right. mate, you like drain through well, the Well, it's like the when day. you go to the grocery store, like you're just, if you think about it, you're there for like an hour, you're constantly making decisions, yeah. and you get to the checkout line and there's a candy bar. There's a reason there's a candy bar there. Yeah. Because making even like what brand of spaghetti sauce should I buy yeah. causes your your willpower to deplete. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so willpower, um, all these things are sort of the same thing. And the idea was just showing a convention over configuration. This idea that Rails, I think, uh, spent a lot of time and energy advocating for is basically part of the same thing by reducing um, choices and getting everyone on the same page about defaults. Because defaults are really um, defaults are really a psychological hack that we can use to allow us to both when we're in a, a really good mood allow us to do more before we deplete and use, use up too much our capacity, but also keep us on the straight and narrow when we're in a bad mood. So you may think when you're being a programmer, what do I name this controller? That you think that it has zero cost, but yeah. in fact, it's actually sapping your willpower and your ability to actually think through the more important problems. Yeah, I, I know I've, I've said in projects myself and been like, how do you even get started? Because I'm thinking about, oh, do I, do I want to do Postgres or MySQL? Right, yeah. <laughs> like, yep. like, yep. Uh, and just, really silly decisions yeah. like that, like by the time you've made a few of them, and, and I think the important part is not to say, well, we're going to take away your decision making, right? Because people don't like losing autonomy for very good reasons. What you're saying is, we're just going to give you some sane defaults. Right. Defaults are the hack that you use to prevent yourself from being cognitively depleted, so you have the energy to work on the real problems that matter for your business or for your product. And, and even think about defaults. Did you ever see the movie uh, uh, Moscow on the Hudson with uh, Robin Williams? No. There's a scene, there's a, a wonderful scene, uh, it's from the 80s, but it, 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 whenever I think about cognitive overload, I think about that scene where he goes and he wants to just buy coffee. <laughs> and he's a, from the Soviet Union. He just wants to buy coffee. And he looks at the coffee and he says, Folgers, Taster's <laughs> Choice. And then finally he's looking and then finally he's running back and forth and he's like, coffee, coffee, coffee. And he passes on. <laughs> because yeah. you know, so, those choices yeah, it's, 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 it's people, people like uh, what's the quote? People like choices a lot more than they like having to choose. Yeah. 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 So, so that was sort of the first half of it. Um, the second half was talking about all the excuses that people give themselves to uh, justify not building up these abstractions. Uh, so I think one of the most common ones is like, oh, I, I'm so special. I have all these special needs, special requirements. And if I don't, you know, if you make me use a tool that's for everybody, how am I going to get my job done with all the with being so special? Um, and then people, uh, when, even when people get past that and they say, you know, I am doing really the same thing as everyone else, they use this excuse of the law of leaky abstractions. Like, oh, these abstractions, these abstractions are, are always leaks, so there's no point in even bothering with them. And you, you, ironically, you see people making this, uh, these arguments about leaky abstractions sitting on the top of the most epic abstraction stack, right? So you have, you have node people who are really allergic to abstractions, but they're sitting on top of not just, you know, not just the hardware abstraction, but C, Unix, POSIX, LibUV, you know, one of the most amazing dynamic language JITs that ever been created. And then on the top of that, they say, oh, promises. That's such a heavy abstraction. I can't yeah. to deal with that. Well, this is really funny too because you think about like it wasn't that long ago that people were literally like if you want like hardware was bespoke like every new chip was completely custom silicon and then at some point
some point, processors, CPUs, like general processors, got sufficiently good as an abstraction that everyone's like, you know what? It's silly for me to be laying out my own chips. Let's just use this off-the-shelf Intel chipset, right? And you would never think about it. No one ever is thinking, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I want a new computer. Uh, should I get x86 or should I right, build right. my own? It's like, okay, I'm just going to use x86 or ARM. Those are the two things yeah. that everyone's agreed upon. Nobody thinks about that. So it's a little bit arrogant, I think. But this happens every every layer of the abstraction stack. Everyone always thinks like, well, I rely on all these abstractions, but I'm at the peak. Like, the thing that I am doing is so unique. Like, really, there's no shared solution or shared abstraction that could possibly encapsulate this problem that I'm having I until am, you get to it, right? I am going to cut this piece of wood. I need to go and craft something that, in which I can separate these pieces of wood right. from each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, you just go grab the saw. Yeah, exactly. Just, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, that's, and that's fine. And I think the reason is that um, people go in when you're, and there's kind of, as you says, there's this like layer of experimentation at the top. So there's the abstraction stack, and then at the top, there's always a layer of experimentation. And especially like uh, younger developers, less experienced developers, they come in and they say, well, you know, I tried the abstraction, it wasn't perfect yet, it, it leaked a lot, people say it wasn't quite perfect, and so their reaction is not, well, I should wait for this to mature, their reaction is, well, of course, this abstraction as a on principle must be bad because I failed at it. And then the next time they see an abstraction, they basically just hate, they hate all abstractions. And, and yeah, and I think what's kind of cool is that when you get past this, when you say, no, x86 is a thing, Unix is a thing, uh, C is a thing, um, you can actually start building much, much higher than you thought you could build before. You actually start being able to, you get into a, a, a place where you have shared understanding of what it is that you're building, and you can, as Steve Jobs said in, in the quote that I excerpted in my talk, you can start from the 20th floor instead of starting from the first floor. And there's way too many people that are always thinking, oh, I'll just, you know, I'll start from the first floor every time. It's a lot simpler, right? right? But really, you want to be building things. Having that shared understanding allows everyone to kind of like solve the problem once and then start building on top. Uh, and a lot of times, uh, as you could have said in the presentation, that means having shared implementation, like Rails, Ember. These are shared implementations that everyone can build on top of. But even if you don't share the implementation, even just sharing common vocabulary, having a common interface. So a good example uh, that you could have used was the idea of promises in JavaScript. Everyone was having to deal with asynchronous values. Everyone was having to, was implementing promises as a way of solving that, but everyone's implementing it just a little bit differently. Right. And you really couldn't build, you couldn't use these pieces together. You couldn't build on that abstraction. So uh, Dominic Nicola uh, really was the one that drove, okay, well, hey, look, we're all doing similar things. I'm going to write a spec. And it's going to be a set of tests. It's going to be a test suite. And if you write a promises implementation, everyone just conform to this. And and that, I think, had really unexpected properties, emergent properties where, okay, now everyone's standard out of the spec. Now it's in the DOM, the DOM spec. Now it's in the W3C specs. And now, actually, support for it is being built into the language. And that had to happen in a layered abstraction sort of Yeah, because it, it, it gets to be something almost like an if scene. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's a construct yeah. that you're going to be able to take for granted, that you're going to be able to go from one yeah. platform, you know, that you're already in this language. It would be like if there's no if and everyone wrote a if function using go to. So you, yeah. you, well, you, you could imagine that someone says, I don't really think control flow really belongs in the, the, the funny. So this is the thing people say about problems. I don't understand why control flow is in the language. It's like, hey guys, guess what? Control flow is in the language. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. statement. They'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we could, I think we could add another asynchronous control flow primitive to the language and I don't think anything's going to explode. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as far as uh, working in these abstractions, it can be become complicated and uh, there's, a, there's a product that you guys have, have, have launched and, and as I said when I was interviewing Leia, that you know, I'm not I'm not being sponsored by this, but you guys are doing great uh, long history of just putting stuff in the community, so I wanted to promote your company, so can you tell us a little bit about Tilde and, yeah, and yeah, the product sure. that you're uh, creating? Sure, yeah. Because it relates great. also to your and talk. I think, I think it's actually related to, to open source work as well, because uh, the last company that we all worked at together, so the founders, me, Yehuda, Leia, and Carl, uh, we all worked at a, a VC-backed company before, and, and the experience was great. It was very uh, emphasized open source. But at the end of the day, you know, the money, it, was, it wasn't necessarily self-sustaining. If you didn't achieve liftoff right away, it's basically like the team got scattered to the wind. And so when we started Tilda, we really wanted to do something that was bootstrapped. We wanted to be bootstrapped and proud. Uh, but it turns out it's hard to be bootstrapped and proud if you're bootstrapped and bankrupt. Yeah. So uh, we needed some way to make money. And the obvious way to do that is to become Ember Inc., right? There's like MongoDB Inc., there's Meteor Inc., and there's NPM Inc. NPM Inc. There's like a long, somewhat history of VC-backed companies doing open source, where that's like the company driving. Um, and 
that's a totally plausible model. But for us, we feel like the best innovation happens when you have kind of a coalition of companies all working together, and there's no one dominant company. We, we like Postgres, we like Rails, where there's a core team, and there are members from many different companies all working on that problem. They steward it, they yeah. do a lot of work on it. But... And you have to reach consensus. And actually, you can't bully ideas, and you have to argue for your ideas on the strengths of their merits, and I think that's very important. Um, so, so what do we do now? Well, we wanted to build something cool. We didn't want to build something really lame. Uh, we believe in tackling hard problems. And we also believe in playing to your strengths. So we spent a long time thinking about, okay, well, what are our strengths? So one, I think we know um, how to build developer tools. We've been doing it for a long time. Um, Carl's a badass at building distributed systems. Yeah. And I think we, we have a pretty... And we know the real stack. And we know the real stack. <laughs> yeah, obviously. We know the real stack. So that's You guys picked it up at some point. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, uh, so, uh, so we built Skylight. And uh, the reason we built Skylight was that in, all the way back in 2009, hard to believe, five years ago, DHH wrote a blog post called The Problem with Averages. And he said, if you're thinking about the performance of your web app, thinking in terms of averages, the words he used were useless and wrong. Um, he said, what you really need is a histogram. You need to see the distribution because if you're a statistician, you use uh, you use averages to think about normal bell curves. Right. But that's not what response times are. Yeah. So he said this in 2009. It's 2014, and there still has not been any tool on the market that was that developers could take off the shelf and get that tool, right? right. Um, if, you're, if you're a Google or you're a Facebook or Twitter, you have teams building this for you, but that's not, you know, Joe Small Shop. Right. So, so that's what Skylight does. Skylight basically gives you the tools that the big companies have to think about web performance in a way that's super accessible, super fast, and Ember app is like really, really fast, really responsive, um, and I think pretty easy to use. Is it possible with uh, Skylight to be able to see, look at, at the metrics and be able to try to figure out what kind of characteristics like uh, a specific type of user, like an admin logging in and doing right. a bunch of crazy... So that's what the histogram is for. Yeah. Like basically, if you have an average, you're taking cache hits, cache misses, RSS feeds, XHRs, admin users, that causes three more database queries to happen. Yeah. You're taking all of that and you're compressing it into a single number. So what the, having the histogram there, the, we keep the whole distribution. Yeah. So we can show you the histogram for any time slice, up to 30 days, um, for any endpoint. And so you can see, like, oh, it looks like there's a cluster. You can zoom in and you can say, oh, it looks like if the request is taking 700 milliseconds instead of 200, it's because I'm doing all these extra queries for my so, database. So one thing, that you, one thing that you left out is that it's not just the histogram. Once you decided um, what part of the distribution you want to look at, you actually get a really high fidelity trace, which tells you, you know, first you had this wrap thing, then you went into this controller, then you made these three database queries, then you started rendering a template, and you made these three database queries. Um, and we just announced at RailsConf that we're adding uh, CPU profiling, very, very low impact, maybe like 10 microseconds per request of, of impact uh, to do CPU profiling. And then that means we'll be able to say, here are the actual Ruby, this is the Ruby code that actually spent, uh, that actually was spent. So we can basically not just show you, here's the distribution of your request, but we can show you exactly what is happening inside those requests. And not just what's happening inside of, you know, the average request, but what's happening in slow requests or fast requests. We can compare, you know, maybe a fast request is fast because you're not running all this code. You can and that drill maybe, in and look at that it. That maybe sounds like an incremental improvement, but it actually completely, completely changes the way that you diagnose it. changes the work how you diagnose the front end, right? Because the way that you do it today without Skylight is you say, oh, it looks like there was a spike in production or response time's not really bad. And you know they're bad because if the average is bad, then you know it's really bad. Uh, so you're like, okay, let's go diagnose this. So what do you do? You, you check out the app on your local machine, you run it, you maybe put some seed data, you, you try to like put some load on it, you plug it into the production database, you can't reproduce it. Uh, well, I guess we'll just pray that this doesn't happen again. Yeah. But what you do with Skylight is you have a graph, right? You zoom back and see, ah, here's a spike. Here's where the 95% of power spiked. Yeah. Select it in the chart, and now you have a full fidelity stack trace of exactly what was happening in your app in production, on your production boxes, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to think about it ahead of time. You can go back 30 days. Yeah. And I mean, can I even find out, like, maybe if another process was impacting what I'm doing, like if I'm running something, so I'm, I'm looking at my app and it's, I, I get these really slow requests at a certain time in the day, I can't see anything weird in my app, but does it does that 
CPU help me like see like oh there was a bunch of other stuff maybe running at that time. So, I don't think we're so we don't do anything like that right now. I think um, you can definitely imagine us doing. Uh, our goal in general is to identify the kinds of problems that are that are hitting that people are hitting. Um, and we're a very small team. We're only six people. It gives us a lot of focus. And what that means is that we we look and we say okay what kinds of problems are related. So a really common one that we noticed was n plus one query. It's people are running the same query over and over. Again. So we spent the time to actually um, you know to automatically detect and show you when you have repeated queries, same single sing request. Uh, we, we had a CPU profile because a lot of people said, "Well, this is great, but I have this big area of just Ruby Ruby code. I have no idea what it is. How do we get more?" So um, if we notice that this kind of problem of like you know there's a background job and it's making my request slow is really common, I think we'll probably start looking at. We have a lot of areas and things like distributed tracing that we want to get into, and really what we end up working on is based on what's the next next thing that we can do that will help another group of people effectively diagnose what's going on. So you're kind of a little bit of a dog fooding in as well. Yeah, I mean, we run Skylight on our own app. Our own app is a, a big chunk of it is a Rails app, and we use Skylight, so we're looking at Skylight every day, basically, to see what's, what's slow, what's fast. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to no speak problem. with me, and thanks for hey, all your work for uh, having us. Number and Rails and, and, and all that stuff, and Bundler and everything. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Great. thanks. Great. Thank you very much. I really appreciate yeah. you. Uh, User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.